Inside the Magic, Jonathan Isaac. Jonathan Isaac is an impressive young guy. I say that for the basketball player that we expect him to become and the person that he is right now. Isaac with the rebound and the putback. That's the way a young fellow starts an NBA career. He's a refreshing young man to be around. I mean, he's just a, a, a nice kid with a great smile, and that's infectious. You like being around the, the guy, and, and our, all of our players have really welcomed him with open arms. He's got a great attitude. He's a sponge, picking things up very, very quickly. And he's got a unique talent, in particular on the defensive end. He has elite length. He's always in passing lanes. He's always getting deflections. He's always a block threat. And offensively, he's very talented. But he can dribble the ball. He can pass. He can shoot. He can do a lot of different things. So when he figures it out and the game starts to slow down for him, he's going to be a very difficult, difficult matchup. Loose ball, Isaac on the deck. Nice save to Biz. In traffic, Augustine. Isaac with the follow. That's Jonathan Isaac. All Isaac on that possession. The thing I love about him is he's very humble. He's willing to learn. He asks his questions. He listens. He does his job. You don't see that much from rookies. It's crazy that that's unusual. That's kind of my perspective on it. I'm coming into the league. I had no idea what's going on. I need to learn. I need to ask questions. I need to watch people. I just think that should be the, the, the normal thing for rookies to come in and, and be a sponge. Three, one, two, three. <laughs> Isaac learned to listen at a young age as one of six children. But Jonathan's love of basketball came after his parents separated and his mother moved the family from New York to Florida. Looking for a positive way to keep her kids occupied, she signed them all up to play. I don't even know why I chose basketball. I guess it was just divine intervention, to be honest with you. I just wanted them to do something. I didn't want them to just be home watching TV all afternoon or playing video games and stuff like that. I'm just big on sports, especially kids of single moms, you know. I think sports is a good outlet for them. Initially, it was just for fun, but then coaches would come over to me and be like, man, your son is really good. I think that, you know, one day he can really make it. It's like, oh, okay, this, he's onto something. One of those coaches that saw something special in Isaac was Carlos Clark, who played college ball at Ole Miss and was a part of the Boston Celtics' 1984 NBA championship team. Now living in Naples, Florida, Clark met Isaac playing pickup games at the local YMCA. At the time, I think Jonathan was still in middle school. You know, skinny, frail, thin guy. Great kid, though. I wasn't really into watching NBA basketball. I wasn't into watching any type of basketball. But he was like the guy that played in the league. He knew everything. He just knew basketball. Whenever I wasn't playing with him, I was watching him. I was on the other team, I was watching him. And just watching how he moved and watching how he directed traffic and just watching how he played. He always says, move without the ball. Set screens, come off of screens. And I just started to play with him. And sometimes we would just gel. And I would look at him, am I doing okay? Am I doing good? When he was younger, he was thin, had big feet and kind of clumsy like. And I always thought, was his body going to ever catch up with his whole basketball game? And if it does, what kind of player he's going to be? Growing up, I, I almost knew, like, if my knees is hurting, my back was hurting, oh, man, I'm about to grow again. People are like, John, you're growing stuff. I'm like, oh, I hate it. Always in pain. Your growth spurt should close at age 13. And here he was, you know, at 15, 16, and his growth spurt was still wide open. So the doctor kind of predicted, well, you're probably going to have about a seven-footer. And I was like, are you for real? I can't afford to buy his shoes as it is, you know, so. It was kind of just yearly, like my freshman year, I was about six foot six one. Sophomore year, six three, six four. Junior year, six seven. Senior year, six nine. And post grad, six ten. It was just steady growth. I just kind of learned to like cope with it, keep readjusting to my body. It just opened up another door for me, growing to be six eleven, being able to, to still have guard skills and still handle the ball and stuff like that. So it's been a blessing and a curse. 
After Isaac's sophomore year of high school, Jonathan felt he needed more support to develop his game and made the decision to transfer from Naples to the International School of Broward. That was kind of like the moment my mom really trusted in me and said, you know what I'm saying, you want to make this move, you feel like this is what you want to do, then we're going to support you, and she did. Sometimes we had to drive two hours in the morning for me to get to school and two hours late at night after practice back to Naples and wake up the next morning and do it again. So that was just the time of sacrifice, and I took it to heart, and I worked really hard while I was at ISB, and it turned out for the best. Got a call saying that there's this young kid down in ISB. At that point, he was about 6'6", 130 pounds. The only other school that was recruiting him at that time was Arkansas State. Now, I didn't know he would grow to be 6'11", but I did know that he fit the bill with his shooting ability, pass, and dribbling, and he had some type of work ethic behind him. Coach Gates, he started to take interest in me and text me and stuff like that. That was my first time getting experience with a, with a college coach. And it wasn't until I went to IMG that the doors blew off and I started getting offers left and right. After graduating from ISB in Fort Lauderdale, Jonathan Isaac's basketball journey continued in Bradenton when he chose to go to IMG Academy. I wasn't ready for college, no doubt about it. I wasn't ready physically or mentally to step into that bigger stage. And it was just, you know what I'm saying, what do we got to do? What's next? And uh, the next stop was IMG. Uh, say you're back here. You got to fight, right? We're going to make the stop. Coach Mahoney, great, great dude, great, great coach. He kind of changed my perspective on a lot of things. And I was coming from ISB where I was the man on that team. Now we go into a different type of offense where it's not just Jonathan Isaac. It's not just get Jonathan the ball. I'm having to do different things and play a different way. And I think it really helped my game. What was so unique is that he sprouted up. Nobody was telling Jonathan Isaac how great he was when he was 13 years old because he wasn't. And then all of a sudden, when he's 17 or 18, he's one of the best players in the country, but he still has that attitude of the kid that was 13 or 14 that was just fighting to get on team. And I think that's what makes him so unique in this age, a top 10 player that didn't feel like he was the best player in the country until maybe he was the best player in the country. Now 6'10", Isaac had the attention of traditional basketball powers like Duke, Kentucky, and North Carolina. But the relationship Jonathan had developed with Coach Dennis Gates was strong, and he remained loyal to his commitment to Florida State. A lot of college coaches, you get to talking about basketball, and I think he knew basketball wasn't the only thing on my mind, and like basketball wasn't the only thing that was important to me, and it wasn't like my life yet. So uh, we would just talk, man, and talk about life. Jonathan's about trust. He's about developing relationships and, and loyalty. That's the way he's based his philosophy, which shows a level of maturity that's, that's beyond his years. Coming in as the highest rank recruit in the history of the program, Jonathan came with an abundant amount of humility. He basically did not want to interrupt the success of Xavier Rattan Mays. He didn't want to interrupt the success of Dwayne Bacon. So he tried to figure out how he would be able to insert himself and assimilate to the culture of the team without disturbing the goal of other guys. And he did so on a defensive end, and that's why he takes the approach that he takes to the game now. And that's how he's manufactured most of his points. Another rejection deflected by guess who? Isaac. My thought process was get in where you fit in, you know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do to win games, to help this team win games. We got scores and other players and just figure out how I can help, figure out what, what I got to do to win. And that turned out to be being the third option or rebounding the ball more, blocking shots and playing great defense. They were very good early on. They blew a game where they were up 18 points to Temple, maybe the fifth or sixth game of the season up in New York. And he missed a layup that would have won the game. And the way that affected him, he was really, really upset with himself, feeling like he'd let his team down, that he'd blown a game. And I don't know that that's necessarily the norm when you're going to be a millionaire in five months. He knew he was going to be a millionaire, but it still affected him that much to lose a game. Oh, man, the Temple game was devastating. I missed the last shot. Coach trusted me. We got people like Bacon and X, and he trusted me with the last play, and I blew it. I was crushed, man. I was, I was crying on the court. Uh, the game's still going on. My teammates picked me up. 
I've never been in that position to just not even get a shot off, just to kind of blow that moment. And I, I didn't really know how to cope, and I just, I was just sad. It was tough. The ACC is no joke. I think it's always going to be the greatest conference um, in college basketball. We want to play in the ACC. It's just premier. Isaac, a three. Come on. Notre Dame was fun. That game was fun because I didn't have a great first half. I was down on myself in the in the locker room. I'm, you know, what I'm saying I'm not playing the way I want to play. And I was literally sitting there talking with Coach Gates, and he's just like, "You're a second half player. You're going to come out. You're going to do great." And uh, that's what it turned out to be. And it's turned over. Beach a block by Isaac. Colson put it up. Blocked again. And the horn sounds. Jonathan is a very, very humble guy. I truly believe he's a unicorn. Kids don't come around that often with that ability. But more importantly, that humble effort that he makes to make even from the janitor to the president feel the exact same way. He lights up a room with a smile. He's definitely a hard worker. But more importantly, he's a people person, and it's uh, about relationships, and that's kind of what we built throughout the years. Coach Gates, he's the big bro that you, you go and talk to and uh, always got your back, always got your best interest at heart. His word is gold to me at certain points in time. You know when somebody has your best interest at heart, and, and if they know more than you and they're wiser than you, you, you go with it. Jonathan uh, always had a very humble approach, a very mature approach that he wanted to learn and, and listen and gather wisdom from people who had been there and done that. And I think that separates him. He's able to evaluate himself, listen to people who he thinks cares the most about him, and then go out and try to keep it with a level head. Isaac throws it up and gets it to go with the left. Right in front of a lot of those NBA scouts. Everybody assumed he was going to leave because how could you not? You can't turn that, that kind of money. But what was cool is it never seemed to affect him. He never talked about it. He never wanted to talk about it because he thought it was insulting to his teammates to talk about it. Like, it's not about him. It was about the team. And that's really what permeated his whole season here. Even though he was here for six or seven months, he goes down probably as one of the most beloved Florida State basketball players of all time because of his personality and his attitude on the floor. Hey everybody, I'm here with my mom to officially announce that I've decided to enter the 2017 NBA Draft. I'd like to thank my coaches and my teammates for helping me get through a tough season, and to all the fans that support us throughout all the ups and downs, I hope you choose to support me on my journey to the next level. Thank you and go Knowles. What I remember about Jonathan, even prior to him deciding he wants to put his name in the draft, he had to be encouraged. <laughs> that the time was right because he didn't want to make a bad decision. I didn't think I was ready. I didn't know if I was ready to take that step. I didn't know if I was physically ready. So I'm sitting there battling with Coach Gates. I, I might want to come back. And they're like, no, you know what I'm saying? We're packing your bags for you. You're getting out of here. And it kind of worked out. He was humble enough to want to know exactly where am I, not someone who feels that he was better than he actually was. We had to encourage him that you have a unique special opportunity that we can't let pass. The man is ready to be drafted. Welcome to the 2017 NBA Draft. It wasn't me, but I was so nervous. I was overwhelmed with a lot of joy, you know, to see that he got to that point. During that night, I could just see it in his eyes that he felt that he was ready. But I also think he's such a good family man that he was happy that his family and his mother and his father and his family and friends could be there with him to enjoy that moment. In addition to having his mom there on draft day, Jonathan's dad was there as well, an invitation that was a long time in the making. My dad used to be my world, like my world. I used to sleep with him. He'd pick me up from school all the time, run to him and jump in his arms. It was great. He's still in New York right now. Um, him and my mom had split up. Me and my dad haven't always had the best relationship just because of communication and me being in Naples and him being in New York. And sometimes I've had resentment with him and Coach Gates has been that, that steady speaker, like you need a relationship with your father. You need to reach out even when you may, maybe he doesn't reach out sometimes. 
Although he did not have a relationship with his dad, he began to form one that made him comfortable enough to have his dad there in a green room on draft night, which meant a lot to him. He helped me a lot, so now me and my dad have a more stable relationship. He's a super spiritual and goes to church all the time, loves God. He's like that, that, that spiritual guy like up there for me. So whenever I have anything, I'm struggling spiritually, I need to talk about something, he's somebody I'll talk to. I definitely give Coach Gates a lot of credit and respect for helping me renew that relationship. With the sixth pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Jonathan Isaac from Florida State University. I texted he and his mom that night, and, you know, congratulated them, and you know, he was happy. Mom was proud, as she should be. The whole thing was surreal, so to speak, knowing we had a kid from Naples, which is not really considered a basketball place, so to speak. To come out of here and be able to do what he did was great. I didn't know Orlando was gonna pick me at all. I got picked, I'm like, I'm going to Orlando. And I sit there and I'm like, I'm going to Orlando. Like, I have no idea what's in Orlando, how is it gonna be. I barely remember getting my name card. I'm just like, what's next? This whole drafting is really fun, it's really exciting, but it, it almost means nothing because there's, an, there's another chapter that starts as soon as we shake his hand. And that's the work that's next. much like being nervous I was just so amped up like I'm like this game is here you know what I'm saying I'm ready to play so I got back from my shooting routine I just put on my warm-up to stay warm and I put everything else on and my jersey still hanging up I ain't even thought about it and we do our you know what I'm saying our film and stuff before the game we like let's go and I just we went out there and didn't even think about putting it on sitting on the bench and biz. I didn't even know he recorded it at all. I didn't I didn't know till I hit Twitter. Yeah, it's just just fun, man. It's a great rookie memory to have. The handle to Isaac. Pretty left-handed finish by the Magic rookie. Jonathan Isaac with the ball fake and the 18-footer that's good. We want to bring Jonathan along at the right tempo and we feel that the group we have around him will allow him to grow the right way and as he earns more, he'll eat more. Driving floater, tipped in by Isaac. We expect great things of Jonathan, but our mantra has been, be our hardest worker, don't be our best player. The rest will take care of itself. Jonathan has all the tools to be an extraordinary player in this league. It's gonna come down basically just to how much does he want it. Does he want to be great? If he wants to be great and is willing to work so, I think he has potential to be that. What a pretty play on the inbounds. Pass to Jonathan Isaac. For Isaac, working hard has never been a question. His work ethic was developed at home from the ever-present example of his mother, Jackie, who grew up on the island of St. Kitts. My mom has worked harder than I've seen anybody work. And there's been times where she had two and three jobs, and she's just trying to provide, and she never complained. You never, you know what I'm saying? She's still trying to do for us to just make sure we have great lives. That's something that I saw as a young kid, and I was like, in order to get what you want, you got to go through hard times. You got to sacrifice. You got to give stuff up. And that's kind of where I took it with basketball. Growing up in a small island, you know, not too many opportunities. I wouldn't say it's a third world country because it's not that poor, but I grew up at one point with no electricity. You know, running water would stop. When I came to America, I decided, you know, I wanted a better life for myself. Once I started having children, I was like, they're gonna have a good life. They're not gonna experience all the things I had to experience. Setting an example for them was important, you know working hard and educating yourself and let them know that, okay, even though I could afford to give you everything you want, I'm not gonna give you everything you want because I want you to know that you need to earn it. I've always told him that with this game, I said, don't ever get comfortable, don't get complacent. 
Because at the end of the day, there's somebody else out there that's putting in the time, putting in the work to overshine you. So you always got to stay ahead of the game. And that means work, dedication, sacrifices. And you got to put it in. And you're going to get out what you put in. There's a three by Jonathan Isaac. Throughout the year, he's going to be pushing the starting group to make my job difficult in terms of keeping him out of the starting lineup. We'll see how that progresses as the season goes along. But, you know, he's going to get his, uh, his feet wet guarding some of the best players in the world. And we're going to throw him out there on those guys and use his defensive length to disrupt those guys. Isaac cut him off that time. Throws a dart into rejected by Isaac. He wants to learn. He wants to get better. So he helps himself. When guys have that attitude to open ears to listen to anyone that they don't even know, being able to show work and put the work in, well, he wants it himself. Picked off by Isaac. Every day I have a moment where I'm just like, I'm here. Like, this is my job now. This is what I'm supposed to do. Look at my circumstances and look at where I'm at in life and be grateful for it. Isaac with the steal. Nice lob ahead to Mackey. Jonathan's a mix of a lot of things. He's a nervous rookie, and he's a guy with uh, wisdom beyond his years on the basketball court, and he's a very bright kid. So I think it's a good mixture. We're very excited about what he will become as time unfolds for him.